Okay, then I think we can go ahead and restart it. Okay, what was I saying? I was talking about the Syrian refugees, right? Yeah, you were just yeah. talking about the Syria project. Yeah, uh, uh, this cooperation, the fund uh, came up with a list of 20. We got through the list, maybe, I think uh, we, were, we are going to be able to help eight or seven, or I mean, approximately around that because some of the people we cannot do anything about, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but we haven't, we haven't been able to get to that yet because we wanted to finish the ones that we're doing at the moment. There are still uh, uh, individual uh, demands that we haven't been able to match with the volunteers and with the uh, media press attention lately, we are getting more and more of those. Uh, we, we went ahead and um, we're using um, MailChimp as a, a mailing device for mailing our volunteers and we're calling for help uh, through MailChimp. We uh, went uh, uh, ahead and sent a mail uh, yes, yesterday or the day before uh, calling for more help on the so cases. Those, those would go to your like 800 volunteers or so? Yes, and, only and volunteers. How many responses do you typically get when you reach out to that many people? Uh, what happens uh, with the bulletin, news bulletin, we don't get so many uh, active responses from that. It, I mean, it's more, most of the time we say, huh, okay, let me see that. After that, what we do, we send a second email. Uh, sometimes we send it from our personal accounts to those who are only who signed up only for uh, taking pictures or doing models because from our uh, volunteer uh, form we have this uh, it, it's very similar to enable uh, they sign what they can do they, they can take pictures or they can do modeling and they can do printing so if we get if we don't get active responses we uh, send another email for example if we need an uh, uh, measurement and pay a picture uh, taking from anyone uh, in Kayseri for example we found we find any people uh, the people that have volunteered from that city and we send an email to them separately okay there's a case in your city do you want to take part of it and then that usually works so sometimes from out of the blue, there are people saying that I want to do stuff. What can I do before we even send a mail? So we uh, collect those mails in a folder and sometimes we go back to them and say, okay, personally, you had wanted to take part in a case. There wasn't a case available then. There is now. Can you do it? Okay. Are you so using any kind of system to manage all of the... I mean, you're using MailChimp to do the emails, but what system are you using to store those 800 volunteers and your recipients and things? Google Drive and OneDrive. Okay. Uh, we are using uh, case pictures and case measurements to store them. We use OneDrive because we had the like 100 gigabyte place there. Uh, and we are using our other documentation using Google Drive. Uh, but other than, that, other than that, it's all here from the executive team. I mean, it's <laughs> quite a lot of time. It takes a lot of time. We are actually going uh, to ask for a volunteer for a secretarial job here. Mm. as far, uh, And we want to uh, unload some of that uh, matching and uh, documentation at least part of the job to volunteers because it takes a lot of time. We're doing the press. We're doing the model uh, modeling uh, controls we're doing the uh, matching we're doing the pr we're doing the mailing we're doing it all our four or five people here uh, in our uh, own system we need more volunteers for that but because we have this system going on here it needs to be someone who's going to work here at least part time so we thought that we should call for a volunteer secretarial work and that's on the agenda, but we haven't got to it yet. <laughs> I can't hear you. Hmm. Sorry, did you have a question, Robbie? I think I saw you raise your hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, are there any success and case studies? Uh, how have you used your volunteers, in, in specifically 
taking measurements because you know and the patients would be coming to you from different parts of the city you must be in one city and patients would be in different city so how do you basically manage your volunteers and how do they exactly know what measurements do they have to send you so uh, are are your volunteers very well equipped with knowledge and how do you really train them in different parts of the city and how do they really send you the measurements okay uh first when we met with this need that uh, measurements were needed needed to be taken for pictures needed to be taken uh, in a different city we collected all the uh, videos that we could find from enable and the uh, documentation uh, a few of our volunteers volunteered to translate and make a guide for uh, picture taking and uh, measurement taking so now we have a video tutorial in Turkish with uh, a mix of enable video and our own cases as well. And how to do the take the measurements, how to take the pictures. And another volunteer, uh, volunteer wrote a written guide on what to do with this. So we have this one written and one video uh, guide. Uh, whoever uh, volunteers to take the measurements and the pictures, we send these documents. And then if the pictures are fuzzy, I mean, we, t we control what came, comes back from that. If, we, if there's anything wrong with that or if there's anything missing, we give feedback. Okay, do this and do that. We need more pictures and we need a video, stuff like that. And then we send these documents when they're, uh, if they're okay, we send these documents to the uh, modeling uh, volunteer. Yeah, and I did include a link in the group chat um, it's a starting point. It's not, it's, it's in English. So I think that Zeynep is dead on. It has to be local language. And that's, that's really one of the big reasons that we started this whole chapters thing is because we realized that I would go, I would go so far as to say most of the people that we want to be helping couldn't read that English document, right. And figure out how to take measurements and do that. So, um, you know, really what I, the way that I look at it is we're trying to provide like almost like a template, a starting point. Um, you know, if you want to go as far as the video, I mean, Zeynep obviously is an overachiever, right? Like <laughs> you're amazing, Zeynep. <laughs> um, you know, but, but all this information does exist out there. So if you're looking for something, Robbie, like for example, whether it be statistics, uh, measurement guide, um, you know, maybe some advice on where to store the information and collaboration tools, like all of these things have been solved by, you know, Zeynep or, or another chapter or another group. Um, so this is the forum to come in and ask these questions. So I'm glad you're asking. Um, but this document might help. I try to keep it updated. So for example, um, there's a, there's a new graphic that I put in there. So if, if you guys come up with something even better or you think like, hey, this should be included in the measurement guide or, um, you know, that local like starting your own chapter guide that all of you probably got in email. If you see something that you sh should be improved in there, don't hesitate to email me or email enablechapters at gmail.com or something. Can you also email this document, Joe, to me? Um, I, I or give the it. link. Oh, do you not see it in the, in the group chat? Or do you want the chat box? Uh, no, I'm not, I think, in the group chat at the moment. Uh, there should be like a little chat icon down at the bottom of your screen. I mean, I'll send it to you. It's not yeah. a problem. Yeah, okay. okay. I, I'm into, in, new to Zoom thing, so <laughs> I may have missed it. Um, so anyway, yeah, I just wanted to make that point that there, there is a lot of this material out there. And one thing that I see happen a lot is people doing work over again, right? Like starting all the way from the beginning when most of it is already there, maybe you just have to, to finish the last little bit. So yeah, don't hesitate to ask. Yeah, sure. And Zainab, I had a question. So, you know, the, the video that you put together, the, the translated measurement guide, all these things, are you using the same sort of procedure where you reach out to your volunteers and just say, we need somebody to put together a video who has these skills and wants to do it. And then some people raise their hand and, and they go do it or how, how are you managing that aspect yeah well what happens that when uh, when we meet uh, every month uh, there are always these new people and uh, old volunteers as well they raise questions 
and uh, one, one of them was how we how we can help in taking measurements and pictures as, as well we were saying that there are these resources available in english and then I, will, I mean what i say in every meeting is that we don't give out assignments to any volunteers we, we try not to at all it's a volunteer organization that the volunteers take initiative in taking assignments. So in one of the meetings, uh, the IEEE student organization uh, responsible, the head of the student organization, okay, as the IEEE community, we are volunteering to make this video in Turkish. It took them three months, but they did it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so, it's volunteer work, right? Everything gets yeah. done in your spare time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the other one, the written document, uh, one of the uh, volunteers that uh, asked for the documentation to take the pictures and measurements, we sent the video, we sent the other stuff uh, to him for guidance. And then he came up without telling anyone with the written guideline himself. So <laughs> that's uh, how it uh, happened. Now you said um, that when you get together every month, so do you do a video call with your, with your groups or do you meet in person or how do you? We meet in person. In Istanbul. We meet, so yes, yes. We, ha we have this. That aren't in Istanbul. Yeah. How, how do you loop in the people outside? Uh, that's an issue that we need to address. We've been uh, uh, talking about uh, um, doing Periscope or Facebook live uh, broadcasting uh, during the events. We haven't been able to do it yet. That's one of the aims that we have. Facebook Maybe live. Next. That's a good idea. Yeah. That's a lot easier yeah. than this Zoom thing. I don't. Yes. You can't. You, it's uh, not video conferencing, right? They can only. No, that, no. That? It's just broadcasting. Yeah, yeah. OK. But it, so it's, it's very effective because the last meeting, there was a new volunteer who had an uh, entrepreneurship website and a Facebook face, and he was already broadcasting an, an event every week. So he came to us and said, can I broadcast your event? And he said, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so he made a live broadcast of our meeting, which was very effective. I bet, so yeah. we said that oh, we should organize it. We haven't had the chance to organize it yet, but it's very simple. Uh, because in every meeting, uh, the first half hour, uh, we give a presentation. We have this um, PowerPoint presentation uh, of our story, how we got to be where we are. And we give a feedback on what we're doing at the moment. Uh, and we take uh, questions afterwards. The first like ha half an hour, 45 minutes of the meeting is this. So it's, uh, it should be out there for, an for anyone who's interested. Uh, also to work from uh, to work for the case from outside Istanbul that's our aim but we haven't been able to do it uh, online yet I'm gonna I just I, ironically I just got a message from our chapter leaders saying that we have a TV interview tomorrow but I was gonna yeah. I was gonna suggest we should we should Facebook live it say hi Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. I like that because I mean Hungary is not huge, but we do have people who are far enough away from Budapest that they can't drive in for our meetings, and we do get mm -hmm. together probably once a month or so. Um, but we've been looking for a way to tie those other people in so that they feel like more uh, active in the community, you know, active in our group. That's a good idea. Social media is a very very good outlet. Uh, we you post my a, each. I don't I don't yeah. think about social media as the answer. So you have to tell me that I'm supposed to think about social media. <laughs> yes, you should. Because I mean, our job, our, our other job, like I have two more jobs as a designer. I also have a, a Maker Kids. Uh, I'm the founder of Maker Kids in Turkey. We give education on technology to kids, and and. The business, the, those two businesses are mostly driven by digital media. So we know a little bit about how to handle ourselves in the digital ground. That has been a very good uh, like a tool for us. Uh, for, for every meeting uh, and for every news outlet, we use our page, Facebook page. We have a meetup account. Uh, we have we, we now have Twitter. We didn't have Twitter before, but we now have Twitter as well. We post uh, 
almost everything. Also in our blog too, we say that we have a meeting on the 7th of this, uh, no, uh, April. We post it on all these, for all in, uh, these outlets. Uh, we make an event. We, went, we, went, we make an event in Facebook and a meet up together. And uh, we uh, try to make, uh, send out news bulletins after the meeting with the meeting notes, what we discussed, what we had, what are our news. So even if we cannot uh, link them directly, we haven't been able to link them directly to the meeting until now. We try to inform everybody as much as possible what's going on here. Also, the Ankara group is also meeting regularly. Uh, plus, we have we uh, respond uh, very fast to any people that connect us through uh, Facebook. You can't imagine. I mean, I answered uh, Facebook messages uh, for two hours yesterday. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That, I mean, if you give, send feedbacks uh, and give responses soon from social media, they engage. Well, I have uh, two questions. Hi, <laughs> Zaid. Uh, uh, do you do you look uh, for any university to form a partnership? Hmm. We are we're, we're not looking for it. We uh, a few universities came to us uh, with uh, biomedical uh, faculties. Okay. They wanted to work with us. Uh, we. We, uh, we met with them like any other cooperation or volunteer network. Mm -hmm. We said that we are this, we are this, you can do this, you can do that, especially for biomedical students and university. It's good for us if they can work with uh, uh, graduate students, uh, do theses, stuff like that. They haven't been active. I mean, after f one, one, two, three meetings, they have not come back to us. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the bureaucracy there, it's so challenging as well. They, I mean, there's, the universities themselves have not been active in our, in our work until now. Uh, what we have working for us is that we have a, a physical, um, how do you say it, a therapist, volunteer, mm -hmm. who is the head of the department in her university for physical therapy. Mm -hmm. So she has sent us two doctor students to work on the cases. Okay. So they're doing a thesis on that. Also, uh, the Orient Institute, who's based in Germany, I think, doing uh, studies, uh, social uh, studies mostly, social, psychological, economical studies like that. We have another um, um, uh, doctorate uh, or postdoctorate uh, students uh, from that institution. Uh, she came to us saying that I want to study the social uh, impact of this project. Mm -hmm. And she's written a project, uh, I mean, we went with her, she has written a uh, project, um, what do you say, um, letters of intent. So we uh, worked on the letter of intent together. I gave her her my feedbacks on how we could do what we could do together. She's going to study the uh, uh, reactions of the family, the communications uh, of the volunteers with the family, and she's going to study and publish the uh, res results of this. So we are going to work with her uh, on this uh, particular case. So what, from my experiences, uh, corporations are hard to get involved in uh, in the project. Uh, the bigger they are, the harder it is. But for volunteers, individual volunteers who are working for corporations, get the engines rolling. If you can. Uh, okay, I'm, uh, I'm asking you, can that. I can I just oh, add sorry. one thing real fast? It's just one thing you might find is that universities and hospitals. If you want to partner with those institutions, many times they require that you be an NGO, right? Because they will need a formal agreement. So a university yeah. will almost never make an agreement with one person. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, to, to Zainab's point, sometimes it's, it's easier or maybe even better to find a volunteer that's already in that institution, work with them. They can use the resources of that institution uh, find students at a university, find doctors at a hospital, but then you do not have to have 
relationship with the hospital or with the university, just with a person there. So that, uh, that might be one thing that could, that could help you use those groups or work and partner with those groups without having to form your own NGO. Okay, I, I formed my NGO here oh. in Brazil. Yeah. That makes it easier. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm asking that because I got to start some conversations with a university here in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and they, are, they were very interested in the project, which even talked uh, to include a discipline in the postgraduate uh, course. The only problem is that we would have to pay for the student student scholarship. I don't know if you have something uh, similar in your country, but mm. uh, uh, they, uh, sorry, my English is not so good, so I, I try to do my best. <laughs> so we have to pay some uh, to the development, this kind of uh, discipline, I think. Okay. So we just start the conversation. So we have a lot to do to discuss. So is that so? Can I say something? Mm -hmm. uh, um, the universities that we con uh, have been co in contact with, they're private universities uh, funded by uh, funds, private funds. So mm -hmm. money was not an issue for us uh, mm -hmm. in working together. Uh, for your case, I mean, I don't know your financial uh, structures, but we don't have any money yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> <Me too. laughs> uh, if if some similar uh, a similar offer came to us, what I would do was uh, would be, uh, I say, okay, I don't have money. Uh, okay. If you don't have the money either, let's make a third partnership who will sponsor this. Uh, okay. Huh. See, yeah, we yes. we need we need Zane up on all the chapters. <laughs> <laughs> you should run this meeting. <laughs> I have enough on my plate. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, you <laughs> want more stuff, huh? <laughs> That's a good idea. Uh, I have one more question. Uh, how do you track to use the prothesis and patient uh, adaptation? Hmm. Uh, that's a uh, field that we have to get more improvement on. Uh, we have not been in contact with all the cases, past cases. Mm -hmm. uh, they do not usually come back to us. Uh, you have to track them down yourself if you have, uh, I mean, if you, have, if, you, if you can spare the time. What happened with uh, one case was we matched a volunteer with the case and our volunteer uh, took it on himself to track her down, mm -hmm. uh, they, they, uh, they kept in touch. So this year she got older and got her second hand. Okay. Uh, another con another uh, uh, case, we got involved because it was a case in Ankara, a volunteer in Ankara who didn't have a hand himself had uh, done the hand. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we got in touch with the case and said, okay, are you using the hand? Are you happy with it? She said she wasn't using it. She wasn't very, uh, I mean, comfortable with it. So we contacted the Ankara group with the case, reconnected them. So she got her second hand this year. Okay. One, of, uh, one was volunteer tracked, one was tracked by us, but we're not tracking as much as we uh, hope we can um, uh, because it's, I mean, sheer time. <laughs> A lot of this big time. <laughs> Well, and I, I can say that that is the case all over Enable. Um, yeah. In fact, yeah. just this morning, I got an email from John Schull, you know, the founder of Enable, uh, and we are still talking about how to try to track outcomes, you know, yeah. how to, to do that. And, you know, the reality is, is that every chapter will do it their own way. Um, there's, there's no real rules. It's just we will all get better if we can do, if, if we know more about the outcomes. Um, okay, okay. But, one, but one more addition. A way to do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I usually give out my own personal number to the cases or the volunteers do. If, I mean, if I'm personally involved in handing out the hand, I usually give out my own number. 
And if there's something wrong with the hand, for example, the one we uh, delivered uh, the week before, uh, she broke it immediately because she wanted to show off. It was the uh, youngest uh, of our cases. She wanted to show off all the neighbors, but she broke it immediately the, na the, na uh, the next day. So she, the mother contacted me personally and we fixed it. So that's a personal connection going on as well. And yeah, uh, yesterday, uh, last night, uh, Sardar was involved in another case and she got this email uh, from the father. Uh, I mean, I still uh, begin to cry when I think of it because it was a very emotional uh, email. Uh, the kid, the father said, uh, thank you so much, uh, etc. Uh, Yunus Emre uh, went to the pool yesterday. He for, tried to swim uh, for the first time with his hand. It was a very uh, impactful experience for us. And it was a very nice word. We, we get these kinds of comebacks. Sometimes the parents give, send us uh, pictures and so, so forth because we are personally engaged in the families. That's how it goes here. Oh, nice. Uh, and I would like to add over here, uh, it's very important to be personally engaged with the patient. If you are not personally engaged with the patient, you cannot know the uh, pain. Uh, specific. So, and I would like to ask you, uh, what are the uh, most number of hands which you have done so far in Turkey? And other, uh, We're up to 25 at the moment. No, which cases, for example, the Phoenix hand, the unlimited arm. So we, ah. we, well, uh, with the last six or seven hands being unlimited, mm. I think it's 50-50 now or 60-40 even, maybe. Because the ABS syndrome kids, they usually need uh, unlimited arms because they yeah. don't have wrists, most of the ones we met. So it's half half approximately, but it's become it's it's become more unlimited for the last few cases. Yeah, same same. We in fact over here in Pakistan we have around seventy five percent patients mm. who have who use unlimited arm and only twenty five percent or fifteen percent use Phoenix and the and there are few cases whom we are not in right now in the position to enable because they are upper upper elbow. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's the same case over here. So the point is the unlimited cases are much more over here. Yeah, I understand. Well. I understand. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? No. No? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah <I laughs> it talks for an hour. <laughs> hi, yeah. I, I have a question, Zainab. Yeah? It is okay. Hi, uh, more than a question. I have. I think I wrote to you uh, because I need to go because I need to take my daughters to school. So I really need to rush. Uh, okay. I wrote to you on the side. If you have a look, and also I wrote to Joe. Uh, I have uh, a box of ten hands uh, ready by next month. If you need them for the Syrian, they all uh, sizes, but all children sizes, and shapes huh. and, and, and right. So I could pack them and send to you. If you look in your inbox, I'll send you uh, my um, address. So, well, the, the, the charity address. We are a charity. Mm -hmm. so you, can send, you can contact me there. If you send me an email, then we can talk. And also I have some spare capacity because uh, I had two uh, children that when they saw the hands, they sort of disappeared because um, I'm doing Italy at the moment. And um, in Italy is a big stigma not to have hands. So I was listening to your, when you said, oh, they contacted us. Uh, we had a completely different um, approach. We, um, when they contacted us, we showed the hands, and uh, when they tried, the kids seemed happy, but the mothers and parents they went like, "Oh no 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 no, this is too big," uh, you know, they will take um, the mickey out of the kid. No no, we cannot possibly have it. One of the hmm. parents actually told me, "Sorry if I rush, but I really need to to." Yeah uh, yeah sure. Another parent told me that if it's free, it must be rubbish because uh, nobody gives things for free. That for me it was like a big shock. I thought, wow, I'm helping you and you tell me that it's rubbish. I wasn't quite happy. So we had two kids and disappeared. Now we, we're trying to help um, a 30 years uh, old lady, but um, mm -hmm. the charity um, objective is to help children. So we, we collect, sorry, we um, got donations uh, to help children. So I, I cannot help too many adults. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, if you have any, any especially children, but I, I you know, don't worry, just send me what you need that nobody can do for you because maybe you don't find anybody 
this app to do for you, then I'll, I'll do it from Italy and we ship it to you and then you try. Thanks so much. Okay. I have a few yeah. things in mind. Just uh, send me an email and I'll get back to you. Perfect. Okay, I love you. Sorry, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, bye. Lina, you fantastic. He, he, Joe is right. We should have one of you every every year. <laughs> Absolutely, Joe. That was a spot on yeah. phrase. We, need, re- we need a 3D uh, print another Zainab. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll, I'll uh, listen to you another I, three hours, actually. It's really, it's really, it's really, it's really, you're fantastic, really. I, I cannot tell you. Thank anything. you so much. And I apologize with everybody, but I really need to go because here is school time. Sorry. Thanks thank you joining. very much. Thanks for joining. Have a great day. Thank you, Joe. Bye. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. 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 Um, and just, uh, oh, actually, let me, let me publish it to everyone. I think everybody has probably seen this, so maybe this is more for the folks um, who are going to be watching this video. But there is something that we're calling a public wait list. Um, it's a Trello board. If you're not familiar with Trello, it's, it's not important, but it's a place where chapters who do need help, um, whether it be because they need design work or because they get a whole bunch of requests that they can't keep up with. And so they have a wait list. We can mm-hmm. put those recipients on the public wait list. And right now they only stay on that wait list for less than a week before a volunteer picks up the case and starts really? it and making it and then they wow. mail it to the recipient. So I included the Trello link um, in the chat. Uh, if, you, if you want it and don't have it, then um, it's, I don't know, I'll find some way to get it to you. Um, okay. But anyway, it, it's, it's sort of a blow off valve, right? It's, it's a place where if chapters need help, they can go in order to ask for it. And if you are looking for recipients, because maybe you're a new chapter and you have not found your own recipients, this is a place you can go find a recipient, make a hand, and then post photos up on Facebook and start to generate some attention that way. So um, anyway, just wanted to make sure everybody knew that because, uh, yeah, th- this comes up a lot. Okay, I'll check the chat box later. Okay. So? Yeah. Well, other than cloning myself? <laughs> yeah, until we figure that out. Um, yeah. Okay. So just a real quick time check. We only have about five more minutes left on this session. And I'm going to guess that I don't have stamina for another 40 minutes. So um, (laughs) Okay, I have a meeting. (laughs) Good, good. Um, But I'd be happy to spend the last five minutes or so just with general questions and answers. Um, One thing I do want to touch on is there was a recent letter from the ECF. So I would like to take maybe two minutes before we wrap up just to address that again for the folks who are on the video uh, or watching the video later. Um, Mm -hmm. So are there any questions or other topics that you guys would like to discuss um, before we run out of time? Robbie? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this question is for everyone folks on the meeting. So how do you guys especially uh, cater issues like aesthetics of the hair? Because uh, as Jenna mentioned earlier, the first hand she printed was in green color. Uh, so that that's a very big issue over here with us in Pakistan uh, because aesthetic and uh, people want the hand should be aesthetically pleasing so that they can wear wherever they go. So what color combination do you uh, do you guys use in your uh, for your recipients uh, and what's your take on uh, on color basically? Shall I answer that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the final and the best working approach we are handling here now is we meet when we meet with the cases the first time we always have one or two um, if possible more hands to show them how it works we show them the videos of the uh, prior recipients and how they work and we emphasize to the family to the kids look this is not a prosthetic this is a toy this is a mechanical device to make your life easier. You are not someone with a disability. You are a special person. What kind of thing would you like on your hand? Uh, the last uh, recipients, the last five recipients we had met together, uh, we had uh, organized a 3D scanning company to sponsor them for 3D scanning. Instead of taking measurements, we 3D scanned the last six uh, Istanbul cases and on that meeting on that event we made an event out of it uh, we talked with the kids we talked with the families uh, most of them came with the idea uh, wanting the hand uh, as 
skin colored as possible at the first uh, initial meet. But when we said, like, look, we made this frozen hand for Yamur, we made this uh, Hulk hand for this and so forth. After that, uh, out of the six cases, five cases became uh, Captain America, Spider-Man, Fast and Furious, and one more. But the sixth case, we couldn't. Uh, the, it was a teen, becoming a teenager girl. The family was very like this. And he said, they said that they want skin color. So we managed to like talk to them and explain that how this will uh, improve uh, the kids' social uh, engagement as well. So we made the theme, we made, we made them uh, choose their own theme. Uh, and one more addition to that, Ankara Group has uh, started a volunteer uh, training session with to uh, psychologists and uh, children studies uh, experts, how to communicate with uh, cases. So I'm waiting also uh, from a report from them, that, uh, from them, well, which I will contribute uh, to the whole uh, volunteer network on how to um, uh, interact with the cases uh, from a, a professional point of view as well. So. But we, until now, we've been using our own experience on communicating with them. I did just include a link to uh, something that we're calling the Kwawu arm. Um, it was made for a gentleman in Africa. And it's a, it's a remix of a flexi. So, Robbie, if you, if you haven't seen the flexi arm and the flexi hand. I have, I have, I have. <laughs> I think that's the most natural looking one. Um, people tend to be drawn to that. Uh, yeah. Because it does look natural. But, but it I, doesn't work that well. It doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't. It's not it very functional. Look, it just the, the it, best one is the Phoenix, and the first hand that we printed was the Flexi hand. But again, the Phoenix uh, is the best as far as the functionality is concerned. Yeah, I think so too. So I apologize. I do want to take this last minute or so to, just to address the the letter from the ECF. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about it, but um, if you if you haven't heard. Uh, the ECF posted an open letter on their website. That's the Enable Community Foundation. Um, and you can find them at enablecommunityfoundation.org. And I think at the very top, there's a link to more info. It talks about this announcement. Um, I, I would encourage you to read it. I'm not going to try to characterize it or you know, tell you what's in it. I will say, though, that um, it's caused a little bit of confusion. There was always a little bit of confusion about what is the ECF, what is Enable, what is enabling the future? What are all these things? Um, so I'll just say that as far as I know, nothing has changed within our community. We're going to continue on the way that we always have. Uh, we never work very closely with the ECF. So from my perspective, nothing changes. Um, so that's the easy answer. If you want to talk about it in more detail, you know, we can certainly do that maybe on the next call. But I just want to make sure that everybody who watches this knows that it doesn't impact the work that we're doing as chapters. So we just forge ahead. Okay. okay. All right. And I'm telling, I'm, the timer is saying that we're about to get cut off. So I'm going to say goodbye okay. to everybody. And thank you so much, Zainab. It was amazing. I, I, I learned so much. I was taking notes and updating my documents and texting. And so this was great. I really appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Hope to meet you soon again. All right. Sure, sure. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thank you. Thank Bye. you.